What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Beyond the 90. And Leicester have just drawn away to Crystal Palace. We've got Rich with us and we've got Alex as you per usual. Rich, just over to you. What are your initial thoughts of the game? Uh, two points lost. Um, drops, should we say. Sorry. Um, the first half, I, I would say we were probably better for 75 minutes of the game. Um, but Crystal Palace were made the most of it when they were on top. Um yeah, I kind of would be disappointed, really, really disappointed, to be honest. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a weird game because in normal circumstances, I'd be a bit more confused and disappointed. But just with mm. the turnaround time, the two days before the last match, yeah. that's why I don't feel it. So I'm just a bit confused overall because in a normal game, I think we could have won. But what are your thoughts, Alex? Because I know it was looking at that team with seven changes initially – you're thinking, is this going to be like a West Ham like last season? Because they were actually quite poor, that the West Ham team, and they tried the same thing again. And it just didn't quite work in the first half, did it? No, it didn't. Uh, relatively, I was disappointed. Uh, kind of like what Rich said, two points lost there. Um, you know, when both teams played on Saturday, you know, Crystal Palace played, Leicester did as well. And to me, you know, Leicester played great for, you know, 70 minutes, I would say. But Crystal Palace really seemed to be on a different level when they had possession. Um, and there's times where you totally see that they got that Leicester got caught up in their own end. Um, and overall, you know, I think that's just two points lost that they should have and they could have easily taken. Yeah, it just seems to be the tail of this season, to be honest, with all these different kind of teams where they're not quite striving for the for the win, or it's not quite happening. You see it with Liverpool yesterday as well, where. Sam Allardyce managed to get a draw out of nowhere like he usually does. And it, it just it just annoyed the it just annoyed and it's just one of the seasons where everything's going up and down. So you look at for example, I'm I'm just gonna bring it on to where it first off. Obviously we have the seven changes and just over to you, Rich, with with the penalty, because I don't know if everybody else felt the same way, but as soon as you and Nacho's doctor took um Stepped up to take yeah, it. the stuttering would, run. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not confident with this one. I would have you preferred know Perez to take it with the form he was on as well, but it was. I thought it was a good decision for for Nacho to take it for a couple of reasons. One, he looked really confident, like as in he went and grabbed that ball straight away. And if you ask anyone, you know, any manager, they'll say the same. They want the person who's most confident to take it to go to to take it. And if he he, he went up and grabbed that ball, and I thought, right, if he scores this brilliant that's maybe the start of his confidence maybe that'll help him throughout the rest of the game um and and he put it down it was great as soon as he did that stutter i thought oh he's missed and honestly instantly and i know it's so easy to say now that you know is he but i genuinely i was confident that he was i thought he's just going to blast this in and then when he stopped i thought he's missed and instantly you know obviously the keeps it was a really terrible ter well it's one of those that if he'd sent the keeper the wrong way then you go, oh, brilliant, he gave the keeper the eyes. But it was terrible, um, realistically. So, yeah, gutting. Um, he should have just just laced it. Just absolutely. Do, do a Vardy, you know, just smack it so hard. That even if the keeper does save it, it's going in the back of the net. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, Alex, what are your thoughts on the penalty? Disappointing. You know, uh, I was really hoping that he'd be able to put it in, um, especially with how he's been playing of late. You know, this would be such a confidence booster for him. Yeah. And... You know, at the end of the day, you know, the hardest thing to do right now with him is that, you know, is he reliable? That's the question that I'm really starting to question. You know, I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt on multiple occasions. You know, maybe this was just not, you know, this wasn't his game or, you know, you know, opportunity loss, but it happens. But, you know, Rodgers is giving him the opportunity and he's giving him the chance to prove himself that he is, you know, he's reliable when Vardy can't play, you know, and, you know, hindsight being twenty twenty, if he put this in the back of the net, you know, we could have won this game 2-1. There's the three points right there. So, you know, I've defended him in the past, but it's come to the point where you go, okay, how many times can you go, I've defended this guy? Yeah, you know, that's, was, that's my biggest issue. The, I, I totally agree. I think last year we thought, okay, we're seeing a turn of the corner. You saw with the fact that he was coming off the bench, he took games like the Aston Villa game, the Everton game. He was taking it up and you're thinking, right, if something does happen to Vardy and he starts, we, we've got this player. And this season, again, I, t I agree with you. It's uh, As soon as he started for that penalty, I was thinking, oh no, what are you doing? You just put your, again, like you were saying, Rich, put your foot through it and go mm -hmm. for the ball. And then we would have won this game. No problems, really. We, Rod has made a great tactical decision, but we're not looking at that. We're looking at the fact that we've missed the penalty. Yeah. 
it was making a big chance. And there was a few chances. I think we had 72% possession in that first half. Ridiculous. And we didn't really do anything with it. And a lot of that was just, I know we had seven changes, but the team just didn't really click, did it, Rich? Well, it's interesting because I thought, I mean, Ian Atcher, before that, if you remember that, that he did that little turn um, and he looked he looked like he was on it. I was like, oh, okay, we're going to get a decent Ian Asho today. And to be fair, I think that, like you, you know, we're not here to, to judge the tactics, but I think he got it right. I think, you know, you, the, the amount, if you look at the amount of chances and how, how um, you know, how dominant we were, he got it right, but his play is letting down. So, for instance, the big one that I think of, Pratt chested it down from eight yards out and cleared over the bar. And you're like, what? Um, you know, and then there were a couple of other chances. Obviously, Harvey Barnes, you know, yeah, don't get me wrong. He scored that amazing goal. Great. But he also, you know, cleared the, um, you know, cleared the, the, uh, the crossbar a couple of times and, you know, scuffed it wide. And so did Perez, even though I thought he had an amazing first half. Um, yeah, I think that we just weren't clinical enough, um, which I think has been a bit of a problem of the last couple of games. Even Vardy seems to be, you know, I know he scored the last game, but let's be honest, it wasn't going on target until it took the deflection off the defender. Even he seems to be just sort of missing little chances that you you're normally put your house on him um, converting. So I think the whole team is just a little bit off it with their, you know, the final, the, well, the shot really. I think the, the, the build-up play is amazing. And then we just get to that final space. You just need to put the ball in the back of the net and we're just not doing it um, most of the time, which is a real shame. It's something that I was actually talking to one of my best friends is a Liverpool supporter and he said that was one of the reasons why he didn't like um, Brendan Rodgers as well. He would get to the byline and get the ball in and nobody was willing to put it in the back of the net. So it reminds mm. me of a very, I'm seeing, like you were saying, a very similar thing to what's happening now. And it, there was a few chances as well in the first half where we should have gone a, 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 set, a goal up and we just didn't. Yeah. And I was thinking, Alex, this is going to come back to haunt us. And then in the second half, it pretty much did. Yeah, and you know what? Like, you got to take, you got to capitalize off the chances, you know. And when you don't, it, it shows, and you you end up getting, you know, getting hurt in the end, you know. And when Zaha scored, you know, to take the one nothing lead, you know, it just showed right there. And all of a sudden, we were chasing the lead yet again, um, you know. And like I said last video, you know, we were lucky that we were able to, you know, come back after chasing the lead. But you know, we don't want to. You don't want to be in those positions. You know, you have the opportunity you should do whatever you can to, you know, capitalize on those opportunities. And for some reason, you know, I don't know if it's the amount of games that they're playing, you know, and they're not getting enough rest, but, you know, you need to take those chances. And especially when you have players on the bench coming on, you know, you need, those are the players that you need to be able to trust in those situations, you know, when the starters can't play. And, you know, for me personally, like there's some players coming off the bench that I don't trust, you know, especially if you need to put them in to, you know, give Vardy a break or give, you know, another player a break in that situation. Just I, that's the, there's more nerves in that now, seeing that there's players there on the bench that you beforehand you'd be like, yeah, I trust them to. I don't know if I trust them at all now. It's a strange one because. I agree with you, but at the same time, with the turnaround with two days, I mean, it was they ran us into the ground, Man United. They were a great team, and we got a draw from them, really good. But I think we tweeted before the game that it was a be a typical lesser thing to not win this <laughs> game, and it's yeah. happened once again. So we we look at that, and I don't blame them for playing the side they did because yeah. these players would they've played Europa League, which a lot, and they've played game like two games a week. So they needed a bit of a break with the small window that it was, but it was just, it was just a strange one for me. There was, there was a lot of players in there that had the opportunity to push for the first team. Like, for example, Luke Thomas White, which I actually think he did all right in this game for how young he is and how experienced. But a player like Chowdhury for me, which I'm a massive, massive fan of, didn't step up and go, right, I'm going to show the reason why I should be playing, or even at times why I should be on the bench, Rich. And it's disappointing because I'm such a big fan of him, but there's just something this season just hasn't seemed to click, has it? I, th you know what, I, I agree with what Alex just said, and in regards to the substitutes, but I also think I, I you know, look, let's. Uh, the problem is when when we're feeling disappointed, it's easy to pick up on all the negatives, and I think you know, I, I what I would like to say um, is that a that's two matches in a row now where we've well, actually it's three times in a row we've come from behind. Which if we look at the end of last year. 
we were not if we went down we were like oh well that's it we're, we're, we've lost so i'm really glad to see that there's still that fighting spirit and we've seemed to got back a little bit back now the counter to the, the you know being let down by the likes of let's be honest ian acho um i think that amarty played fantastic today i think he was absolutely outstanding james just i mean he's not sort of he, he's been in from the start but he's just been amazing um i think uh, perez had a really good game uh, especially the first half and i just there's some players that just seem to not quite like pratt didn't click for me today even though i'm a big fan and again i agree with yourself neil chowdry i'm a huge fan huge huge fan of chowdry he just sort of he dropped off after about 25 30 minutes he just sort of i don't know you just sort of you didn't really see him again um mendy was running around like a headless chicken it's, he was putting out fires all over the place he was brilliant again today so there's there's pros and cons and there's you know obviously there's certain players that you look and go right i'm happy if they come in so for me daniel amate i'm more than happy to bring him in and stick him somewhere and he'll do your job i think mendy is a brilliant backup for indeedy for like you say two days after um and then we've just got to get some players that we can we can trust in the other areas yeah, we're getting there slowly. I just want to bring it back uh, to you, Alex, for Amate, because he's one of the players that I've got down potentially before Barnes scored that for man of the match because they didn't have a lot to do, especially in the first half. But the second half, the way that he cleared up and, and just organised that defence as well, alongside, obviously, Evans did a lot of great work as well. But Amate for coming in, for he's not played many minutes now because of, and he's just coming back from injury. But again, he just looked fantastic today. No, I, I thought he was clinical. I thought every time he had possession, he, you know, he, he dictated play in the back end, in my opinion. You know, and especially when, you know, he's been injured for so long and, you know, he's coming back from another injury this year. You know, the way that he's been able to just, you know, being – the way he was slotted into the lineup here and there has been, you know, it's, it's a great addition to, you know, the bench and to the lineup when, you know, Rodgers needs that extra player. And he was there today. And, you know, I really haven't had any, you know, worry whenever he's been on the field. He's been reliable. And that's exactly what you need. And, you know, I, I think I agree with you completely. You know, before Barnes scored the equalizer, he was, in my opinion, he was in contention for man of the match. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think one thing I want to bring back to, obviously, on the in the first half, one of the highlights that I've put down was the link-up play. We saw in, in the Athens game as well was the link-up play between Harvey Barnes and Luke Thomas. Obviously, Athens um, and um, Crystal Palace are two different different teams, but I thought, Rich, that in the first half, them two were combining really well. And it, to be fair, that pair could really push for starting a game if they keep playing like that, if, if they play more like the first half, I mean. Yeah, I think their their link up. They've got an understanding. They remind me of. Um, I know it's a bit of a random one, but they reminded me of how when we beat um, Southampton, um, when we absolutely destroyed them, um, Ricardo and uh, Perez down the right. Those they were just unbelievable. They, and and that it, we're sort of seeing that. I, I agree. Today was a different game to the Athens game because on in the Athens they were just one twos around the corner, and then one of them was ending up in the corner and crossing it in. Whereas today it was more. They were using them as a decoy, and then Harvey Barnes was usually running in, um, you know, uh, turning into the centre and cross, and you know, doing a, a pass into the centre. But uh, they they certainly seem to link really well. Um, so I mean, that's just. Uh, can you imagine when we've got um, Under and Ricardo fit as well, and and Castagna and I mean, I, how does how does Rogers get these in? I don't know. With Justin and Ricardo and Castagna fully fit and and Under fully fit, how does he get all these plays in? I mean, it's a great problem to have, but yeah, we'll see. It is. I totally agree, and especially form being at the moment as we're at time recording second in the league still. So yeah. it. So we got to remember that is a big big point as well. And teams have been dropping points, and this is kind of part of the course a little bit that we're dropping points with everybody else. So it. Just a couple of days ago, people talk about, oh well, it's Liverpool's now. Liverpool's have done it. Now they've dropped points against West Brom, and just one match, and the whole thing just kind of switches. So I, th I think there's only one person to bring it on to now, as we've just talked about our run-up man of the match kind of thing. But Harvey Barnes, Alex, because in the first half, he was creating loads and loads of problems. And then the way he took the goal and the, the players that he managed to wriggle past, was it was, fa it was absolutely brilliant. No, he's playing on an entirely different level right now. Uh, his confidence is just sky, like through the roof. And, uh, you know, I, you know, 
couple couple weeks ago, you know, whenever he had the ball, you know, you'd be like, oh, he's going to miss the net here. But now every single time that he has the ball now, you're like, okay, what is he going to do with it? You know, you're excited. You're you're like, okay, oh, what is he going to do? You know, the, the passes are – he's just completely hungry for the ball. And he wants to score. And, you know, he's capitalizing. You know, he's he's equalized – on you know, the last two last two matches, he's got a goal, both equalizing goals, uh, you know, and, you know, I think he's just become such a, you know, a dangerous player this season. He's really come into his own. Um, and, you know, once, you know, you have that Castagna Barnes link up and then I, I, I think it's going to be great. I think he's just going to get better and better. So, you know, like you said, he, he definitely is the man of the match and, you know, he almost got another goal which, you know, would have been incredible. But, you know, just just the way he's been playing of late has been spectacular. I definitely agree. I think there was there was parts in that game where I was thinking, right, he's he's taken the, the pressure off of Jamie Vardy a lot of the time as well. Jamie Vardy's making the runs away from the ball and Harvey Barnes gone, right, this is my opportunity. I've got one-on-one or two-on-one. Let me just take this ball and try and convert it. And it's something that we've not really seen before for um, as much, Rich. But this season, his his responsibility, I think, is a lot is a word I'm going to use where he goes, no, give me the ball. I will try and put it in the back of the net. And Jamie Vardy and the players around him have kind of helped him with that. Yeah, I, I mean, of, you only need to look at the stat that he scored more goals from open play than Jamie Vardy this season. So it's you, you go, OK, you know, how long have we been saying we need someone else to chip in with the goals? Since Mares left, we've had no one that's been with, has been able to contribute as many goals. And all of a sudden, we've got now Barnes, who's scored more goals from open play than Jamie Vardy has. So you go, OK, hang on a minute, there's something here. He's And I loved him. Um, I was listening to a description from uh, Matt Piper about him and he was saying obviously there's a difference when you've got a winger between a runner and a dribbler and he was saying that Harvey Barnes is a runner because he doesn't dribble he doesn't step over he doesn't beat you by doing really close quick feet he just boots the ball and then gets it there before you do that's essentially what he does and um, and I love that he's just so he's so forward thinking I really think Brendan Rodgers has given him the, the reins to just say no just just do it risk it if you you know it was like Madison was saying the other day I'm not going to get every pass because I've got to try and do those difficult passes I think it's the same for Harvey Bond and yeah, I'm not going to get around them every time and sometimes someone's going to cover it and beat me but every now and again I will get around them just pure pace and direct play and I love that love it yeah totally agree with what you're saying but even then with the goal that he scored today was a lot of dribbling, a lot of taking it past players and slotting it in the net yeah. from an area that Guaita is a very good keeper as well. They're kind of mm. ungrated, but getting it past him and putting it in a place where he knows he can't get it, Alex, I think was amazing. And I just want to touch on him again, because if he keeps playing like this, and for example, this is where we expected a Jamie Vardy to come off the bench, get the equaliser. And that's where last season or the season before, that's where Jamie Vardy would have come in in like the 83rd minute, but it was Harvey Barnes and he's really taken that mantle up from him. Yeah. And, you know, the best thing about it is that, is that you're having players, you know, look over at Barnes and being like, okay, we need to cover Barnes now. You know, it's, it's been so heavily, you know, oh, Jamie Vardy's right here. Everyone needs to cover Jamie Vardy. You know, and now we have Barnes over here. So everyone's being like, oh, wait, we can't just cover Vardy. We need to cover Barnes, you know. And then so all of a sudden you're splitting the defenders up, which is great because then you're going to get more open players, you know. And then once, you know, once you get a fully fit under, you know, put him on the other wing, you know, you have Madison in the, you know, in the center attack, you know, it's great. You know, <laughs> it's fantastic because I think it just opens up play even more. And it gives the opportunity not only for Barnes to score, not only for Vardy to score, but, you know, you have under, you have Madison, you have, you know, Tielemans will be more open at this point. And you can dictate play, you know. It changes the dynamics of the entire squad and how other teams defend against them. And that's an exciting thing to look at because I don't think a lot of teams have really truly thought about that. And they yeah. need to start looking at that. A lot of the commentary that I've watched as well in terms of punditry has been Leicester City are still a counter-attacking team. And there's still this emphasis on the fact that from 2016, we are still this same team, which, as we know, watching the game and game out, it can't be far from the truth. I think this season, this match, I can't remember how much possession we got, but it was, a, it was still the majority of possession and underbred Rodgers yeah. has been that. I think oh, one player that I wanted to bring on that we've not really touched much on, but 
somebody that is vying for that starting position and he's actually making uh, a name for himself as being the super sub that Nacho was last year is Jose Perez because again he did didn't quite hit the same heights today but from what he's been performing and setting up the goal for the setting up the goal for the previous goal for Vardy um, I think he's becoming the player that Gray should have been last season where you look at the likes of he's coming off the bench he's hungry he's pushing for the first team and again today, defensively, which is where I think he shines the most, um, as well as going forward as well. Um, Perez today, Rich, was, was, was fantastic, especially in that first half. He, he was incredible. I think I messaged you actually as well and said just like that, he's, that he was just he was on fire. I, th- I saw a stat and I don't know how true it is. So, um, you know, I probably shouldn't say, but something like he's made six tackles in the game and the most this season is nine. So it was, and that was at the first half. So I don't know if he did. I, so I don't know how true that is, but he was just everywhere. He was so, he, he just crowded them out as soon as they got the ball. And we all know how dangerous he is going forward. Obviously that, um, that assist for Vardy, um, you know, obviously against Man, Man United. He, uh, yeah, I, he's one of those really frustrating players. And one of my friends is um, one of my best mates, a Newcastle fan. And, she was saying that he he was two different players. Like the first half of the season, he was terrible. Second half of the season, he was the best player they'd ever seen at Newcastle. So she was like, it just depends which Iosi Perez you get. And we kind of get a mixture of him in each game. You never know. He never gives you, a, other than Southampton, he never really gives you a full game of amazing. He never really gives you a full game of terrible. He sort of just ticks away in the background. But today, the first half, he was, I, I thought, particularly... Um, I, I agree, Neil. Defensively, I think he was outstanding today, um, especially in that first half. Yeah, I totally agree. Another player that I just want to mention as well is that somebody that's playing from the first minute was Mendy as well. So I think, bearing in mind that Ndidi's coming to the squad and we've talked, me and Alex have talked about Ndidi till the cows come home recently as well because <laughs> the, the last couple of games he's been absolutely immense. But to know that you've got somebody like Mendy just behind that and the fact that I think um, Rich was saying as well today that he is all over the place. He he was he was gathering up all the little balls, and you definitely saw the times where he was challenging Benteke, and they just looked like two Mendys would be as tall as a Benteke because there was such a height difference. Alex, I think he did really really well today, and as 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 Rich was saying, just putting out the fires all over the pitch. Oh yeah, no, he he was so impressive, uh, and he is as reliable as you can you know as you can say because you know especially at the start of the season when Ndidi went down, you know everyone's like oh. Mandy's coming in. You know, everyone was, you know, I was so, I was one of the many that was so sadly mistaken because when he, you know, when he took control and he was like, okay, this is my time to shine, you know, he grabbed the, the bull by the horns and just went with it. And he's been, you know, lights out ever since, you know, he's reliable, you know, there's no, never any like, you know, stress when he comes onto the pitch. He's never like, you, you know, you see him, you're like, oh, well, here comes Mandy. It's like, okay, Mandy's on. Don't worry. We got this. And, you know, today he was just running around everywhere. You know, he was, you know, doing whatever he had to do to uh, to make it work, especially with Chowdhury, you know, not really being there. You know, he really dictated play, um, which is something that you want, especially when, you know, NDD or anyone needing needing rest, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm just blown away by, you know, how well he's been playing and how reliable he's been. Because that's, exa- that's exactly what you need from someone coming off the bench. You know, and if he needs to start, he'll start. And yeah, he's been lights up. Yeah, I totally agree. And also, if you need to shut down a Premier League game, if you're winning 2 0, he'll come on, sit back, um, absorb the pressure, and just help out the defense as well, which was really, really good to see. Obviously, it's come to that's the last game of 2020, Rich, as well. So, so far, we've pretty much played, I think, 18 games we've played so far. Uh, sorry, 15. Yeah. 16 games, so pretty much we've got a couple it's more nine, games. Yeah, nine wins, isn't it? And then two draws now. The last two games, we've not drawn, yeah. and then suddenly two. I yeah. was just going to get your thoughts on what, what, how, how this has been this season, because I think me and Alex coming into this were a lot more pessimistic. I think we, I predicted 10th position we were going to finish because of this downside that it was, but I think we can be happy in how we're moving forward into the future, especially with the likes of Sionchi coming back, Ricardo, as you mentioned, coming back, and in Didi and Castagna as well, coming back to full fitness and showing what they can do. So what is your roundup of basically halfway through the season? I I think anyone 
that is, you know, I, I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed. I think we're disappointed over the, the last this result, but I think over, you know, over the course of this half season, I think we've done really well. I think we've done better than even the last season. Because by this point, obviously, we had that draw to Norwich and it all just went downhill from there. That, to me, was the, the turning point. The, the draw to Norwich, we just seemed to, you know, we couldn't beat them and then we just, nothing after that. Um, this season, we seem to, if we lose, it's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll win the next one, no problem. So, uh, that, for me, has been the biggest the biggest change. So, I'm really happy. Um, I, I think with Mendy, we've got a brilliant replacement and a brilliant, you know, sort of back up to Indeedy. And I think he gives you more going forward, actually, because what Indeedy does is if someone passes it to him, usually it goes back. With Mendy, usually it goes forward. However, I think Indeedy is still the best player. But, um, but no, sorry, to, to answer your question, yeah, I, I'm really happy. I think we're doing brilliantly. I think we can, if, look, if we, if we have another season if we have another half of this season I think we'll be Champions League place so I, I can't you know that that would be my prediction if we have another season like this the way it's going the way the season's going who knows if we can carry on doing this um, and I'll, I'll be very happy yeah I think we're going to do I think we're going to do all right this year we should be okay and over to you Alex what, what are your expect what are, how have you made so far this season since we're about halfway oh I'm, I'm extremely happy with you know the outcome right now um you know, I think we were talking about it at the start of the season and, you know, our expectations were around like eighth to 10th. So, you know, sitting right now, currently in second place, uh, you know, completely ex exceeding expectations. Um, you know, moving forward, uh, it's so tough to say because, you know, especially this year, this year has been such a, a very weird year, you know, especially in the Premier League where, you know, you have games that you expect to win and then you lose. And then the games that you think they can get blown out of the water, you somehow win. Um, you know, that happens every season, but this season seems like that's happening a lot more to a lot more teams around the league. Uh, you know, I think if we continue this type of play, I would be happy with, you know, fourth or fifth, you know, finish. That's, that's kind of where I'm, I'm aiming at, you know, depending with how, what, you know, I don't think we're going to be doing much in the transfer window come January. So, you know, but I think with the players coming back from injury and, you know, it's just going to make the squad much much stronger moving forward and they're gonna those players coming back are gonna feel as though we gathered players in the transfer window and I think that's moving forward how we're, I'm gonna look at it is you know with you know the likes of Ricardo coming back and Sayensi coming back and Castagna and you know and Didi being fully fit and you know under will be fully fit you know this I think this squad can really you know capitalize off of a fully fit and healthy squad moving forward. So, yeah, I'd be happy with a fourth or fifth finish. I think so, too. I think it's still, we've got to remember the Europa League as well. We'll see what we can do in that. And obviously, it's been a few weeks since we've actually put any put anything in. But I think February time, we've got, um, I think two two weeks in February, we've got both the, the 32. So, we'll see what happens there. I'm really looking forward to that. But considering that we're through the knockout stage, we've got a decent enough run in and we're second in the Premier League currently. However, the, the games can go up and down and there's about, I think, eight or t 10 teams vying for that top four position. It's going to be tough, but it's going to, it's open. And I'm really glad that A, we're in there and B, that it is open and the traditional top six aren't still there. So we'd like to thank you everybody for tuning into this program. Thank you so much to Rich. Um, I'll leave his stuff in the description and Alex's Twitter as well. So go and check them out. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great, we'll see you all in the new year. So goodbye from us. So see you later. Bye. <laughs>